How about these reports that the U.S. is looking at restricting some AI chips out of NVIDIA and AMD? To right. certain I have a thesis on this, all right? So they're thinking about restricting the ones to the Gulf. They sell almost none. But if you can get out of selling it to the Gulf at a low price and you put those things out in the market right now, NVIDIA is actually going to profit from this. It's actually going to profit because the demand for their stuff is insane. And again, when you're listening to Adobe and you're listening to Shanti and Ryan, you know that you can't get this stuff done unless you have NVIDIA. What was your take on what Sanjay told you last night? All right, well, Sanjay's basically, he does a lot of high bandwidth, uh, which is memory, which is data center, but he's doing a lot of NAND, which is good. There's not, the, he's talking about a, a 2025 move that makes you really want to get invested in PCs, uh, AI PC. Uh, he, he's also spending a fortune and he's going to own I'll, he's going to open a place in New York. He's got other other plants around the country, but around the world. But I just think his his business is booming. It is just booming, and I think that people bought it up 19 percent. It wasn't enough. This stock deserves to be high, and like it's down 54 cents. So like, did that guy watch? What was he watching? Donald Duck? I mean, Scrooge McDuck? That's a that was a. Sanjay was the most bullish I've ever heard of. I've known Sanjay for many, many years. He's the most bullish I've ever heard of. There are reports that the U.S. is considering restricting certain air trips involving NVIDIA and AMD, particularly to the Gulf. Though these restrictions seem minimal, it could actually benefit NVIDIA. The demand for their products is skyrocketing, and if they can avoid selling to the Gulf at lower prices, they stand to profit even more. This is particularly evident in industries like Adobe and Orion, where NVIDIA's tech is essential. Regarding Sanjay's input, he focuses heavily on high bandwidth, memory, and data centers. He's also involved in NVIDIA technology and is predicting significant growth by 2025. His business is booming, expanding with new plants, including one in New York. Despite impressive growth, his stock is undervalued, which raises questions about the market's perception. Sanjay's bullish on the industry, and it's clear that some investors may not fully grasp the semiconductor sector's value, especially when industry leaders like ASML see no weakness in demand. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video for all the insights. Also, if you enjoy staying updated with the latest NVIDIA news, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. It's totally free and helps support the channel. Third, while the big boys do indeed have a clue, we clearly have a lot of investors, uh, or maybe traders, or, or maybe jokers, who don't know a Frito-Lay chip from a semiconductor chip. How else do you explain what, in, what happened in the stock of NVIDIA today, which makes the kind of AI chips where ASML says there's no weakness? The stock plunged 4.5%, one of the worst performers of the day, as part, as part of a broader semiconductor sell-off, even though ASML was explicit. The companies like NVIDIA are doing fine. It didn't matter. Now, tomorrow, Jeff Marks and I are convening our monthly CNBC Investing Club meeting. And I was trying to figure out a scenario where some of our favorite stocks would come down so we might be able to recommend them at better prices at noon. I didn't think that the price break would come from a semiconductor equipment maker like ASML, which saw a hideous 53% decline in orders quarter over quarter. <laughs> Truly shocking. Even if AI chips are doing well, they can't offset the weakness in the rest of the industry. But this gives me a chance to explain that the semiconductor stocks are really only as good as their end markets. Last night, for example, Mike Ron Sanjay Marocha came on the show telling us that everything in the data center was on fire and that he sold out of the high bandwidth memory chips needed for AI. He also predicted a big PC refresh cycle aided by the introduction of AI-enabled personal computers, which I think will be used for the holiday season right into 2025. So... I think, in fact, I think it's going to be so huge that I keep endorsing the stock of Best Buy, even up here. They've got a giant allocation of these machines. Some 40% of all AI-oriented PCs from Microsoft will go through Best Buy. AMD has exposure both to the PC and AI, which is why we use the weakness to buy some shares for the Travel Trust today. It was painful to do so. The house of pain. But we want to build a position into weakness, not strength. We want to get a better basis. That's how you do it as a professional. Now, we know from some recent surveys that many different telco companies are doing better, but they aren't by any means smoking hot. The Internet of Things and autos, they're just okay. Maybe they get better with lower interest rates, but I think there are better things to invest in. I certainly didn't want to take advantage of the sell-off caused by ASML to pounce on the other semiconductor capital equipment makers, like Lamb Research, very good company, Applied Materials, another company I like, or KLA. They're all good, but they trade together. And if ASML's having such serious problems, you probably don't want to get involved in the part of the food chain that, the, that, that involves these companies, because they're going to go lower. 
But to go back to NVIDIA for a second, this is a company with a plethora of opportunities, and it dominates all of them. NVIDIA doesn't mess around with the semiconductor capital equipment. Makers, these chips are made by uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. We haven't really thought much about the equipment going into it. The Taiwan Semi reports later this week. Perhaps they can straighten us out on what's working and what isn't. Still, today serves as a really serious reminder that even the most bulletproof of semis can be brought down by others in its cohort, especially if it's in an ETF. If you can't tell a microchip from a potato chip, you probably would have sold the stock of NVIDIA today the way so many did at 210, 205, 200. But if you've done your homework, you know that not all chips are created equal, and you're now getting an incredible buying opportunity once again in the AI-related semiconductor stocks. Meantime, we do have some activity in tech. NASDAQ was down about a percent a moment ago. Shares of ASML dropping sharply on their guidance. And for that, we'll turn to Seema Modi. Hey, Seema. Carl, this is the Dutch microchip uh, equipment maker reporting earnings that came in better than expected, but its guide for 2025 is weaker than what Wall Street had anticipated. Uh, it expects 2025 no total net sales to be between 30 to 35 billion euros. The street was expecting around 35.8 billion. And we have comments here from their CEO. While there continues to be a strong development and upside potential in AI, other market segments, he says, are taking longer to recover. It now appears the recovery is more gradual than previously expected. ASML is a key supplier to NVIDIA, Taiwan Semi, uh, and makes a very specific microchip that many other companies cannot make. So this will be an interesting read here across the entire semiconductor sector as we watch names like NVIDIA trade in record high territory. Guys? Yeah, although not right now, Seema. NVIDIA down 4%, AMD as well. Do you believe it is on this uh, related to this news? It may be. Expectations have been very high, David, going into earnings season, ASML today, and then we have Taiwan Semi, which reports in about 24 hours. And uh, given the whole story around demand, those comments from Jensen Wong about insane demand for Blackwell, again, expectations have been high. Yeah. Uh, well, again, uh, NVIDIA and AMD both down. Of course, ASML a lot more than that. <clears throat> Seema, thank you. Uh, Seema Modi. Would point out as well, you know, when we came into the session this morning, NVIDIA was creeping up in market cap towards Apple's uh, 3.5 trillion, but that disparity has actually grown given NVIDIA's 4% loss. Apple shares up some 2%, perhaps on some data from IDC we got this morning as well. You can take a look at NVIDIA, but Apple shares uh, benefiting from a nice move higher. So if you think NVIDIA hits the skids or has some sort of trouble in the first half of next year, how do you trade it now? I don't think you need to chase it. I, I think a, a lot of uh, look, a lot of investors that I talk to want to own Nvidia. They want it in their portfolio, and, and those that are thinking in the traditional allocation approach are not thinking I have to have it all today. Um, having said that, uh, you know I need to start buying it if I don't have it now. So uh, pullbacks are nice, but ultimately um, Nvidia is going to continue to be the dominant or a dominant part of the the tech trade. Mm -hmm. um, but what Dan's talking about, I think, is really what it comes down to. The CapEx spend that we're going to see out of hyperscalers is what this earnings period is all about. And the irony is, of course, that those, those stocks may go higher um, as they talk about less CapEx uh, and less spend on AI. And, and those are some of the names, you know, frankly, that have reasserted themselves. I mean, look at the move in Meta. If they tell you uh, it's the year of, of uh, efficiency in AI spend, um, they've got all this other good news and things that are going for them. And one of the few that, that is pointing to AI revenue base, and, and I think it'll go a lot higher. All right, me too. I hope you found today's video valuable and enjoyable. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, wishing you all the best.